In this video, I am going to explain a, the AK model. The AK model of economic growth is an endogenous growth model used in the theory of economic growth. So we know that endogenous growth models or new growth models, these models try to explain the fact that convergence does not occur or these models are against the neoclassical models of economic growth in the sense that these models do not accept the neoclassical argument of a decline in the marginal productivity of capital in course of time, thereby leading to what is generally referred to as the diminishing returns to scale. So endogenous growth models generally argue that instead of diminishing returns to scale, rich countries or countries in general will experience increasing returns to scale on account of certain endogenous factors working within the economy. So AK model is such an endogenous growth model in the realm of economic growth and development. These models are generally referred to as AK models because they result in a production function in the form of y is equal to ak so why are these models are uh, why are these models called ak models because they have a common uh, protection function form which is written as y is equal to ak a is a constant and k represents capital the ak model is actually considered the first version of the endogenous growth theory let us look at the history of this ak model this model, AK model, was first developed by Frankel in 1962. Frankel showed a constant saving rate, whereas Romer in 1986 developed another AK model with endotemporal consumer maximization. Then in 1962, Kenneth J. Arrow also contributed to the development of AK model by incorporating the idea of learning by doing externalities. And in 1988, Lucas developed an AK model where the creation and transmission of knowledge occurs through human capital formation. Here we explain the simple AK model or the first version of the AK model. The first version of endogenous growth theory, as we know, it is AK theory or AK model. And that first version of the AK model did not make an explicit distinction between capital accumulation and technological progress. So capital accumulation was considered akin to that of technological progress. They did not consider any major difference between the process of capital accumulation and technological progress. In effect, they lumped together the physical and human capital. So they didn't see any difference between physical and human capital. They took both on the same lines. An early version of AK theory was produced by Frankel in 1962. Frankel argued that the aggregate production function can exhibit a constant or even an increasing marginal product of capital. That means Frankel ruled out the possibility of declining marginal product of capital. Instead, Frankel argued that there would be increasing marginal product of capital. This is because when firms accumulate more capital, some of that increased capital will be the intellectual capital. Intellectual capital mainly means human capital that creates technical progress. So that intellectual capital will lead to technological progress. And this technological progress will offset the tendency for the marginal product of capital to diminish. So when accumulation takes place, naturally some of the capital that is accumulated would be intellectual capital. And that intellectual capital will lead to the creation of technological progress and this technological progress will prevent the possibility of a diminishing marginal product of capital. 
In the special case, when the marginal product of capital is exactly constant, aggregate output Y is proportional to the aggregate stock of capital. This is written as Y is equal to AK. As we said earlier, A is nothing but a positive constant and A reflects the level of technology and K here is very important because K is taken in a broader sense uh, because K includes both physical as well as human capital. As we said earlier, we didn't make any distinction between physical and human capital. Therefore, here in this equation, Y is equal to AK, we have K representing both the physical capital and human capital. This model shows constant marginal product to capital, marginal product of capital MPK is equal to dy upon dk, differentiating y with respect to k, that is equal, or it can be written as a. So a simply means marginal product of capital. Now, this ak model is simply a way of illustrating endogenous growth. Assuming a closed economy, the savings are equal to investment under conditions of full employment. Since savings are the function of income and capital depreciate at constant rate, small letter delta, the change in capital stock can be traced through the following equations. So we know that the saving is important, saving becomes investment and therefore I is equal to S. Where does the saving come from? Saving actually come from, comes from uh, income. So that is why we have written saving equal to S into Y. S represents marginal propensity to save. Then what is actually Y? Y is nothing but AK because we have already written Y is equal to AK. That's a production function. So you can write S into AK. So I is equal to S, that is investment saving equality. Saving is expanded as S multiplied by Y, that is marginal propensity to save multiplied by income. Then instead of Y, we write AK because that actually comes from the uh, AK production function, that is Y is equal to AK. And since capital depreciates at a constant rate, the change in capital stock, that is K, can be expressed as K star is equal to S into Y minus small letter delta K, where small letter delta shows the rate of depreciation and K is the capital stock. So rate of depreciation multiplied by capital, that is the whole amount of depreciation taking place in the economy. So when you deduct the whole amount of depreciation from the whole amount of saving represented by S multiplied by Y, you will be getting a figure which could be considered as the change in capital stock K dot or K or stick. Now, this change in capital stock can also be represented by a diagram given below. Let us look at this figure. In this figure, Y axis shows output per worker, while the X axis shows capital stock. The line Y is equal to AK having a constant slope which shows the constant marginal productivity of capital. So we have a line y is equal to ak. That line actually shows the production function. The slope of the production function y is equal to ak depends on the value of a. a is nothing, but it is a marginal productivity of capital. There is another line that is the line s is equal to s into y. That is nothing which shows the total savings in the economy. And since total savings become investment, that S is equal to S multiplied by Y line can be considered as the line representing gross investment in the economy. And there is another line, line below S is equal to S into Y line, that is, that is small letter delta K line. What does that line show? That line shows depreciation rate or that is a total replacement investment. The difference between the gross investment line and the replacement line, that is area between S is equal to S into Y line and small letter delta K line shows net investment in the economy, which is positive 
and of course, increasing also. Now, the growth of capital stock can be found by dividing both sides of the equation, showing change in capital stock with K. That we get K star upon K, that is the rate of growth of capital, is equal to S into Y by K is minus small letter delta. So since Y is equal to AK, since Y is equal to AK, then Y by upon K is equal to A. Therefore, the above equation, K star upon K into small letter S multiplied by Y by K minus small letter delta can be rewritten as K star upon K is equal to S multiplied by A. A replaces Y by K. A replaces Y by K from, uh, from the top equation, from the uh, equation given at the top minus delta small letter delta. So we get the equation K star upon K, the change in capital stock is equal to marginal propensity to save small letter S multiplied by A minus small letter delta. As growth of output is equal to the growth of capital stock, further, so growth of output should be equal to the growth of capital stock. Assuming that S into S multiplied by A is greater than, is greater than small letter delta, the growth of capital stock as well as the, as well as the growth of output is increasing. That shows that the economy will be ever increasing as compared to the solo model. So here, uh, so long as S multiplied by A is greater than small letter, small uh, let, uh, greater than small letter delta, then there will be growth taking place in the economy. AK model with human factor. Now we are introducing a AK model with a human factor, or here we make a distinction between physical capital and human capital. It is, a, it is in its more realistic form, we can also add labor as an input along with capital. In this context, first of all, we can discuss Arrow's model with the knowledge spillovers. In this model, the production function for final output can be written as, so here we change the production function in the following form. Y is equal to B multiplied by K alpha L one minus alpha. This is nothing but a Cobb Douglas type of production function showing constant returns to scale with two inputs, K and L, that is capital and labor. The total factor productivity is given as B. So here B is nothing but it is the total factor productivity. However, we suppose that B is in fact endogenously determined. So here, the total factor productivity denoted by capital letter B is supposed to be endogenously determined. So this uh, production function shows the AK model with a component of human factor or with human factor, AK model with human factor. So this, uh, this equation clearly shows the production function of the AK model with human factor. Now, we are moving to discuss an appraisal or give an appraisal of the AK model. In sum, AK model gives a new framework for the long run growth of the economies. However, there are still some reasons to doubt the predictions about long run growth generated by this class of models. The first line of criticism is related with the non-accumulable factors. In the real world, we know that there are some factors which are fixed in its supply, just like land, and that cannot simply be accumulated indefinitely, such as energy. Another source of the difficulties faced by the AK model is that it does not make an explicit distinction between capital accumulation and technological progress. So this we pointed out at the very outset of the discussion of this model, that uh, the we never distinguish between capital accumulation and technological progress. And this has been cited as a severe problem with the AK model. In effect, it just lumps together the physical and human capital. So to sum up, AK model is an important attempt 
at developing an endogenous growth theory. And it is actually the starting point of the endogenous growth models.